Hey folks, just letting you know that this week's video on how to animate that one female character that Disney seems to be able to pull off with any real consistency isn't going to be uploaded today. Um, instead, it's the show. Take me down to the Paradox City where the next statement is true and the previous statement is false and the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Hey babe, what do you call a cow with three legs? Broken? Lean beef. Hey babe. Would their name be Eileen? This is a true story. It happened to a friend of a friend of mine. In Portland, Oregon, around 1981, a new machine began to appear in various games arcades. The popularity of this game was instantly massive, and before long, bloody fights broke out over who got to play next. But those who got to feed their addiction found themselves suffering from amnesia, insomnia, night terrors, and hallucinations thanks to its psychoactive effects. A month after it appeared, it vanished, never to be seen again. Until now, that is. Let's look at Polybius. Released by Llamasoft on the 9th of May for PS4, Polybius is an urban legend come to life, an arcade outer space shoot 'em up with extreme psychedelic aesthetics. You control a spaceship in a journey through one of a vast number of linear stages, with the only controls being the ability to move left and right in order to avoid obstacles, and shooting to take out enemies, and the occasional cow. In this sense, it's very similar to the standard shoot 'em up fare that was offered in decades prior, but with one major difference that makes it stand out from the crowd. Polybius is hectic. Not in a bullet hell, oh no, there's enemies everywhere kind of way, but more in a, why is everything flashing rainbow colours? Did you see that subliminal message flash on screen? I think reality is folding in upon itself. What the hap is fucking kind of way. It's amazing. This brings me, quite smoothly, to my accessibility critiques. Polybius knows, by and large, what its accessibility weak points are. It's a fast-paced psychedelic venture with spatial warping and flashing lights that offers both a 3D TV and VR experience. It's flat out unsuitable for people with epilepsy or those who suffer motion sickness. But it knows this, and it wants you to know too. Before you're allowed to play, you are presented with a warning screen that presents, in plain language, the risks that play will offer, and the contraindications to engaging. And what's even better is that unlike most games that just give you a timed warning screen, Polybius makes you read information on each of its danger points before actively agreeing to continue. It is one of the best implementations of this that I have ever seen. Now, Polybius might draw criticism from some for not having the option to remove the strobe or warping effects, but honestly, I'm a bit torn on that, because whilst I think that everybody should be able to access the experience, if they were taken out, then what you would be playing would no longer be Polybius. They're core elements. There are, however, some areas where improvements could be made. There was no ability to customise your controls, and although they were relatively simple once you picked them up, the only real instructions you get are the words, do what feels natural, which doesn't always speak the same thing to every player. Other than that, it's very difficult to be too hard on a game that is deliberately designed to confuse, nauseate, and overwhelm. And it has more than a few good accessibility measures thrown in otherwise. Of particular note is the ability to play from a chosen level, given you've met its unlock criteria. Polybius is weird. It's nauseating. It's confusing. It's surreal. It's impossible to keep up with. It's addictive. It's amazing. It's a great game for any fan of shoot 'em ups or even just fans of psychedelia, surrealism, and all out weirdness. You can find it on the PlayStation Store, and if you've got PSVR, it is a must own. It almost made me throw up. I love it. Hey babe, what do you call a cow with no legs? Me? Ground beef. First one was better.
Hi. How are you? Hey friends, it's me, Corbin, here to tell you about ADHD. Previously, it's been Tiger who's been teaching you about this, but this week he's busy, um, muttering to himself about trying to shoot all of the fried eggs in stage 6 of Polybius. So you get me instead! Yay! This week, I'm going to tell you about one word that makes most people with ADHD fill with dread. Silence. Humanity as a whole seems to dislike silence in certain situations, but if you've got ADHD, moments without noise feel oppressive. It's as though the world around you is stagnating, nothing changing, nothing happening, everything still and the same and boring and boring and boring and just so thoroughly boring. Even when there's incidental noise, those little nature noises like birds chirping or houses settling or cars going by, it's very typically not enough. We need sounds of substance. So when ADHD people are stuck in a soundless situation, our brains scream at us to fill the void with something, anything other than the insufferable silence. We go from tapping our fingers to full-blown drumming with our hands, making weird mouth noises, talking to ourselves, humming, whistling, or heck, even singing. And probably worst of all, or at least most awkward of all, we force conversation where there really doesn't need to be any. This causes some real problems in situation where silence is required, desired, or at the very least appropriate. When we're catching public transportation, our hyperactivity combines with this need for noise to become a tapping of the foot or a drumming on the seat in front of us. And if we're traveling with someone else, then it can be all too easy for us to get into a heated conversation which is only exacerbated by a lack of an inside voice. It's not just when we're out and about either. Chilling at home with friends can be really hard if we're not engaged in something more social than not. If I'm, for instance, doing research on my tablet while my friends are reading, playing DS, drawing, just doing their own thing, as amiable as the silence that we sit in is, it's still torturous to have to endure. To overcome this, people with ADHD will just talk, like, you know, will make the most inane of chatter, crack jokes, ask questions we already know the answers to, make useless observations, we just... We just talk, like what I'm doing now. Is this video just me trying to fill a noiseless void? Aggravatingly, for people with ADHD, a vast number of us know that what we're doing is annoying, or at the very least, we convince ourselves that it's annoying. But stopping isn't something that's going to come easy to us. So if you notice that we're trying to fill the world around us with noise, but you know that what is really needed is silence, please don't go ham and get all up in our stuff. Don't yell at us to shut up, but also don't let us annoy those around us. Just be gentle. Our brains work differently, all right? All right. Hey, babe. Where do you find a cow with no legs? Wherever you left it. <laughs>